So I got very lucky, like in, in my junior year of college, I got to do Last Comic Standing. And so that was like kind of a moment where it's like, oh, hey, like you get some airtime, so maybe be funny, right? Even when you didn't think you were building, like you were. Okay, it doesn't feel like anything is externally, like the feedback's not coming right now that I would want, but just know that like, then at least you'll be ready when that thing hits. Sierra Cato is a comedian and writer living in Los Angeles. We discuss what it takes to make it as a comedian today, that is, what it takes to make a living, to make money as a, a comedian and comedy writer. We chat a little bit about the importance of a side hustle, specifically her side hustle, uh, as a full stack developer, why that's important, why that helps when times are slow. And we also talk about doing the work up front. So when shit goes down, when you got that big opportunity, you can take full advantage of it and you don't miss it. It's a great podcast. I think you're going to really love Sierra. Um, Before we get to the podcast, if you guys have questions, I'm going to start getting to a couple more of your questions here on the podcast. Uh, If you want to ask a question, send it in to hello at mattdiavella.com. It can be about creativity. It can be about filmmaking, your specific craft, questions about projects you're working on. Uh, would love to hear from you. Would love to help you out and get to the bottom of your problems. So send in a video or audio. Keep it under two minutes, and I will play that with my guest and and, and we'll tackle it again. Hello at mattdiavella.com. Send it in. Look forward to hearing from you. Um, and lastly, before we get to this great conversation. Have you guys been enjoying the show? If you've been getting some value out of it, uh, I have one favor to ask of you. Very small favor. Head over to iTunes, leave a review. Um, You've been doing an amazing job at helping to increase the awareness and visibility of the show. We've been popping up in the top 200 on iTunes business, which has been incredible because that just means that more people can Uh, get value from the show, learn, and also it makes sure that I can keep doing this (laughs) because I'm not making any money right now, but uh, eventually down the road, that is the goal. I love talking about the building of the podcast, the building of the show, and you guys can hopefully learn something as I start to navigate this little world of creating original content. All right, enough rambling for me. Enjoy the podcast. You're listening to The Ground Up Show, a podcast that inspires creatives to make meaningful content and pursue their passions. My name's Matt Diavella, and I'm a filmmaker best known for the Netflix documentary Minimalism. And I'm sitting down with creators to talk about their process, the lessons they've learned, and how to make an impact. Sierra, thank you so much for hey, coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Should we just like so hop cool. right into it? Sure. I mean, I, you know, if that's okay with you. If there's yeah. anything you need to no. tell me before we get into <laughs> yeah, this, I, know. I mean, it's tell It's going to get real weird soon. Okay. Uh, there's this weird segment in the middle. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Oof, no. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I appreciate you, you coming out here and doing the podcast. Uh, I had your friend Alexis on yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Yeah. That was a weird episode. Oh, I mean, she's just a cool person. I feel like she like brings it uh, into her tone. Like oh, I, even when I'm like in conversation with her, I like turn into a different person. Yeah. In a good way. But it's like, I was like, wow, I didn't know I had that energy in me. Yeah. Right. It's like being swept up in a river. Oh, totally. like, I guess yeah, this is great. where we're going now. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, wow. Um, cool. Yeah. So thanks for being here. Before we, we kind of just talk about your story and, and some of the work cool. that mm-hmm. uh, you're doing or you've done. Tell me a little bit about the work you do right now. Like, Ooh, what's your right life now? look like? Oh, yeah. man. Okay. Well, I guess I do a lot of stand-up comedy, and that's kind of been my life for a while, but uh, that's always happening, and I like that about it. Um, I also just finished working on a show, a TV show called Drop the Mic, which was like a battle rap show. It's on TBS. It's a lot of fun, but sort of I was working in the writer's room. I was writer's assistant, and I've done that um, in the past for other shows as well. And uh, always trying to write, I guess, kind of trying to do the comedy, stand-up comedian, but also writing and auditioning for weird comedy things all the time. So it's a real uh, mixed bag of things, but all kind of with the through line of like comedy. Right. Like, uh-huh. uh, I want to take one pause and talk about the rap battle stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because that sounds amazing. <laughs> it was cool. Uh-huh. Did you ever, like, I, I, 
I don't know if it, uh, so I like got into comedy a little bit in college and did yeah. a little bit of stand up but awesome. like when I really first started getting into sketches and video and all that stuff mm-hmm. it was like the parody rap videos which is oh, just okay. the most yeah, cliche yeah. thing like to do the, yeah 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 no those are fun though yeah they're fun uh-huh, uh-huh. I think yeah I don't know did you ever get swept up in that do you have any I video out there like, that's just <laughs> embarrassing that you're like oh well see this. I do have embarrassing videos yeah. are they rap battles no thank, I mean <laughs> thank god but I also I was just uh kind of so how do I describe? I guess like, yeah, it's a rap battle show that's like celebrity rap battles. And it's basically based on like a James Corden late night uh, bit that he turned into an entire show. Um, and I kind of, you know, I, I have been a rap fan for a long time, but I was definitely not at all at the same level as like a lot of the writers, for instance, one who was like actually a rap battler who's like won tournaments and is like the best rap battler in Canada and stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. So there's like a lot of, there are like a lot of people who actually came from either freestyle background or something like that. So I was just really excited to be surrounded by people who had just like this crazy skill. Um, and I myself, like got to you know contribute little lines here and there to some of the raps which was fun but that's great it was definitely like more of a learning experience because i was just like so in awe of everyone <laughs> well there is such a, a uh-huh. comedic element to yeah. a rap battles it's very there's, like roasty right there's a uh-huh. punchline. like you have to kind of exactly. reverse engineer mm-hmm. the, oh, totally. the jokes to to make it land right. you're like how do i tell this guy he looks like a wax figure uh i gotta <laughs> start <laughs> from a place that's like you're not gonna expect this but right. you look like a wax figure you know, because that's like the that. thing uh-huh. when when you get the crowd like i used to be into those like Oh, man, like all watching rap battles online. There was yeah. this thing called Freestyle Friday on BET oh, uh-huh, that I used to uh-huh. watch. Cool. And there was this rapper, Jin, that was just like oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and he would just destroy people. Like, I think like a, right. so it's like partly scripted, part like sure, partly uh-huh. he has an outline of what he wants to do. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. then when you go off the cuff and like you're like commenting yeah. on somebody, the color of somebody's shirt. Right. Then you're like, wow, how do they even do uh, that on top of? remembering all the other stuff that they wanted to say yeah yeah, yeah it's amazing it's crazy uh, give me one second because i just oh this yeah seems like i don't know what i did i'm like losing it i recently uh <clears throat> i got i got like sick recently and, oh, no. well, I don't know what it is. I'm having all these like weird medical health issues oh, where like mm-hmm. I just break out in hives. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> that's the worst. This okay. weekend we were uh-huh. at uh, Anthony Jeselnik had Ooh, a uh-huh. show here Sweet. in LA, and right before the show, my lips started to swell up. Uh oh. And then I was like, "This is concerning." And it happened like two weeks prior, where it just like blew up, and I didn't know what it was. Uh, I actually took some Carmex lip balm then, and that it blew. I guess maybe oh. I have an allergy to that. I mean, yeah. But then this time I didn't. Uh-huh. But then I'm like sitting through the show, trying to enjoy it at the same time being like, like I might be dying. Yeah. Is my throat going to close up? Like, right. Yeah. Like, you never know. It might right. spread that way. Don't want that to happen. I know. So, uh-huh. so I've been like, I feel like it's, it's still, it's still got me, but um, anyway. Okay. Well, I mean, just I'll case, let you know if your face starts to swell. If it starts uh-huh. to swell, if I pass out, right, right, right. Uh, maybe just call an ambulance. Okay. Uh, I'm glad. I, now I feel more comfortable. Yeah. Now yeah that you you're know in good that. hands. You know, I know how to do that. I think. Okay. Great. We'll be fine. Um, cool. So let's let's go back. Like, when did you first mm. get into comedy? What was? Yeah. When did Ooh, it? Uh huh. I guess so. I started doing stand up when I was like, I think sophomore in high school, so like sixteen. Um, did open mics uh, around here, basically. So mm. I kind of I told you I uh, grew up in outside of LA, and so it was possible, you know, to kind of go to and do some comedy club open mics. Um, there's some who let me in, I think, when I was underage, and then uh, gradually I could kind of do others, but they would, like, make me wait on the sidewalk, and then they'd pull me in and then make sure that I got kicked out afterward, you oh, know, really? things like that, yeah. because, you know, as much as there, I was just there to do comedy and stuff, of course, they like serving alcohol, it's a big, you know, nighttime thing, so... Yeah. So yeah, so I did a lot of that. And then, um, yeah, and so from that, I've always kind of been big into stand-up. And I I mean, that's really young to be getting into stand-up, a sophomore in high school. Yeah, yeah, I was was on the young side. What'd your parents think about it? Oh, um, they were very supportive. I think at the time, you know, they're like, oh, cute hobby. Like, I think I played basketball for a long time. So they're like, oh, well, this is like the new basketball. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Like, there's no future in it. But yeah, you know, it's fine. Um, So they would like drive me to open mics. This is like before maybe I got my license, say. And then, um, yeah, and they've, oh, they would come to shows and I think, you know, have always been actually super supportive and that's like, I'm very lucky and I know I am for yeah. that. And I think, you know, I kind of had to warm them up to the idea that like, okay, now I'm actually trying to pursue this too outside of just a hobby. Um, but 
you know, I, I think I was also lucky to be like, my parents are very funny. And so I think they mm. always valued like funny people. Uh, we would watch a lot of comedy movies or like just always be in, uh, enamored with certain comedians. So I think that was helpful. Like my grandpa, um, my mom's dad, I guess he was like a cartoonist and he was like a humor, uh-huh. like he was really funny and he would also draw really funny things and made a living off of being an artist, like a visual artist. So I think that also really helps. <laughs> you at know? a time when it wasn't as common, too. Oh, yeah, not at all. But, like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he was just, like, had a fascinating life because that was his thing. He would do, like, in-betweener sketches for a lot of the, like, animated um, Bugs Bunny, things like that. And what does that mean, in-betweener sketches? So back when, I guess, yeah, everything was hand-drawn in, in animation. Mm. Um, so maybe the main artist would do, like, the main, oh, you know. That's so cool. Yeah, the main positions. And then he would be one of the people to kind of fill in the gaps. Wait, for legit Bugs Bunny? Yeah. Whoa. I know. That's it's historic. Yeah. And yeah. I think, yeah, he worked on a few other things. Uh, but for sure, it was just sort of, I think, having somebody in your family who was able to kind of pursue a creative career and he didn't die, you know, like he didn't just <laughs> yeah. like fall dead yeah. at 30 years old. Um, that was good. I yeah. It helped. That's uh-huh. a real, that's a real thing that might happen. Oh, I mean, it who, I mean, it could still happen. Could still who happen knows? Yeah. Any yeah. moment you could just but die. Yeah. You at didn't least make there's it. been one, you know, possibility of life. Yeah. Um, so but to have that in your family, mm-hmm. I feel like is pretty yeah. encouraging. Totally. Totally. Um, because it's kind of hard to argue with that when somebody right. makes it and mm-hmm. is successful and does well. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. It's like, it, it makes it seem like, oh, okay, well, so just do that. And then like, of course it's a different time and everything, but I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'd love to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so then you, you, you kind of stuck with stand up from the beginning, was it? Sure. Uh-huh. Um, and do you, do you remember? Remember your like a first joke that actually did well where yeah, yeah. where uh-huh. was it it wasn't okay. like I'm sure it wasn't the first joke you so told. So I so I had I honestly the first time I went up it's like open mics there's like nobody there anyway and I think because I was so young people like wanted to support you know yeah. um so oh, okay, one yeah. of the first yeah so one of like the first jokes I said and it was you know it was very silly and uh, it was like a fart joke, essentially. Oh, I'm not nice. gonna, I'm not gonna make it seem very intellectual. It was a fart <laughs> joke. Uh, yeah. Let's be real. Um, <laughs> that actually, like, it was fine, you know. And I think I was, I had a little bit. I had a, like a lot. Okay, so this is gonna nerd me up a little bit, but I was like, big into student government as a child. Yeah. So I was like, you know, always giving speeches and all that stuff. So I would love to throw in jokes at the speeches. So the whole. Like my whole point of starting stand up was like, oh, you mean you could just tell the jokes and you don't have to do all the responsibilities? Um, so right. I kind of found that kernel. And so I always like had jokes I wanted to say. And so it was like kind of cool to finally have a platform to like just go up and people are just like, yeah, make me laugh. And you don't have to have any sort of position on the school affairs. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, yeah. there's uh-huh. kind of like a rush to that, right? Where like, sure. I mean, because it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. You're like, especially you're so like you're giving this adrenaline. speech that's like, you're not really supposed to be funny, but then you're like, all right, I'm about to tell this joke. Mm-hmm. Let's see if this works out. And then when it does, you're like, holy shit, that yeah, feels yeah. so good. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, clearly hooked. Yeah. Uh, a hobby that got out of control. So, right. so yeah, I, I definitely um, felt that rush right away and continually sort of, you know, and then I would obviously have like, okay, bombing all the time, but yeah. I never felt like it was that bad because, and this is what I tell people when they're like, oh, I want to try to do stand up. What's your advice? It's like, oh, well just go to like one where there's a bunch of strangers because if you bomb, like you just, oh, I didn't, that wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell your family Nobody's or friends. Know. Yeah. Cause everybody's like, oh, I gotta go. I gotta I know. see this. And like, then you have to be accountable afterward and face them. <laughs> right. Like who would want to do that? I don't know. I it's, mean, it, it, it is happens. hard to uh-huh. encourage somebody, I think after you see like if you don't really know like what it takes to do stand up right right some people might be like like maybe this isn't for you <laughs> oh i know i know right and then they might you know in their whole life they've just been watching like netflix specials and like where's the really, most polished yeah, like yeah, a-list they've been working for a long time sure and like because you don't most people don't see that mm-hmm. and most a lot of people don't go to open mic nights oh yeah just i see, hope not i would say maybe stay away if you're not interested yeah <laughs> right like if you like comedy don't go to open mic right, nights. Yeah. i don't know about that yeah <laughs> yeah but i think that there's probably uh like a culture of comedians supporting each other as well where sure. it's like because mm-hmm. you have the conversations like before and after the shows mm-hmm. and like talking about like yeah that was really bad <laughs> that didn't <laughs> yeah, go yeah. quite the way i thought it was gonna go yeah. that's very valuable feedback like yeah if you can find people that give you that and i think what's fun about stand up or from my experience is it's sort of like you know I I kind of was always 
I feel like kind of shy. Like I, I was never like class clown or anything. I always thought I could be funny, but it was not going to just come out of me. So I always feel like what's fun about stand up too is that I can like do my set and then afterward people who like laughed at it already feel really comfortable like, you know, introducing themselves or like being uh, able, yeah, to like talk to you, I guess. Mm. And so I kind of liked it as like a skipping that initial awkward like, oh, so hi, you know, uh, I do comedy, you know, things like that. Like it's like if you can already step into making somebody laugh, I feel like it already, you know jumps a few steps it into really the friendship. helps especially yeah. if you you've you've done well and you've got a couple right. jokes that kind of right um earn some respect like I, I mean i only did it for like a year but then like when you would have the comics and it felt like they were the veterans of the game like they've been mm. but they've really only been doing stand-up for two years okay but then they come uh-huh. up to you and be like wow that was a really clever joke right and you're like what? You're like oh maybe <laughs> yeah exactly it's but it does like yeah it opens uh-huh. it up and like i i always have such a hard time with uh, maybe it's like a shyness, but like approaching people or like I'm not a good networker. And like, so I tend to always just so try to let my work speak for itself, whether it's film awesome. or, or otherwise. And I feel like that's, I don't know, maybe that's like the shy way to do it. <laughs> that's sure. the best way to no, do it. But that's, that's, yeah, exactly how I'd say stand up kind of feels sometimes. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you, like, obviously comedy was there, mm-hmm. but like, I went to your website earlier this morning and it's, mm. you got coding, you got artwork, right. you kind of, it's not like sure. you just stay down a lot on of one things. lane. Yeah. I mean the website, yeah, maybe I should it's update old. the website. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, yeah, no, I, that is a good, I do, I do draw. And I think that was like a big part of, uh, I guess, you know, growing up, I would draw a lot, had a lot of that and still want to, I think, but I haven't done that as much recently, but I do uh, a lot of freelance coding kind of to balance, uh, my life. A little I love bit, that. yeah. That's really clever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's nice. Like, I kind of, I mean, obviously, I do it because it's good money sometimes, and mm-hmm. that's great. But I think uh, more than anything, it's kind of nice to like have something that's just completely different from doing comedy or writing and things like that, where it's just like, okay, I got these like little tasks to complete, right. and then I check them off and I feel good, you know. Do you um, enjoy it? So, you're a full stack developer. What does yeah, that mean? Is that yeah. just like you, mean? Just, you just do everything? It's like, <laughs> it's a mainly it web. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like that. So it's basically like, you know, front end stuff is a lot of like maybe design or making things that like, you know, you see on the screen and then back end being like things in the database and like building out more like, I don't know, storage of information and mm-hmm. things like that. So then just being able to combine the two. The algorithms that the everybody algorithms. hates. Sure, <laughs> upset yeah, about. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess that would be in That's there as well. Though I don't do anything as complicated because, you know, just as a freelancer, I'm like, pretty keep it pretty simple yeah do you <laughs> yeah, enjoy yeah. it i like it yeah i mean so i like started coding a while back and um i studied computer science in college and that was always sort of you know something that i wanted to do but then because comedy sort of took over i felt like it's also like a great thing that i've just had in my life for a long time i want to keep there but i'm not necessarily as like ambitious about it mm-hmm. so i don't put it maybe at the forefront you know anymore Right. It's not like you don't see your future going in that direction. So you, right, right. It's, it's nice to be able to make some money on the side mm-hmm. from it, but it's not something you're going to totally, invest yeah. a ton of yeah. time Yeah. I mean, so. I kind of see it as like a hobby. It's like, you know, maybe some people are like uh, software engineers who do comedy at night. And then I'm kind of like the flip of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I, you said that it's kind of helpful to do something outside of that. Like what, sure. what, 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 how does that help the comedy? And like you do see uh-huh. this with a lot of comedians where it's like, they don't just do one thing. Sure. I feel like you uh-huh. can't just do one thing. Yeah. Today. I mean, yeah, you, I guess, you know, solely for like, uh, just having something else to put your brain on, you know? So mm-hmm. I think, I think it's hard to working in, you know, comedy and then, which is also sort of like entertainment. There's not a ton of, uh, or it's like a little harder to like achieve tasks, I guess. And as somebody who kind of comes from maybe like a school background where I was like, oh, I get my homework done, you know, mm-hmm. yay. Um, I think I felt like it was kind of nice to have, you know, something that's a little bit clearer and then comedy and like sort of the creative side of things. That's a little bit more like amorphous. I'm I'm like always working on things and pitching things and then, we're, you know, doing stand up, which is fun and everything. But I guess, you know, if there's a time where I'm like, man, you know, that thing's really like happened for me in a while. I, even though I know that's not necessarily true because I'm like always working on stuff, I think it's kind of nice to have like something where you're like, oh, and then I can like check little boxes over here. And maybe that's just like my personality, but I think that it kind of helps balance like just the way we gauge like accomplishment in a weird Mm. way. Like I think sometimes I feel as if it'd be nice to have a little feedback 
or something and then <laughs> yeah. you know and then like yeah no, I know I super nerdy, but no I just think that like it's like oh well it's good to be like okay I did this little thing and that was like actually easy to do and I think the same kind of gratification maybe comes from like doing the dishes or you know what I mean like or like cleaning your room like why Making do we clean bed. our room to like procrastinate it's almost like a proca- procrastination uh, method for me in some that, ways I've actually heard that where somebody said like the best advice I ever got was and this is like Tim Ferriss who's like he's really well oh, known yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. he's like uh make your bed every morning to start oh, out with a uh-huh. win and just like sure, kind of yeah, like, like a win right uh-huh. it's like something very small but it just makes you feel like you're you know not a piece exactly. of shit and it's especially small. as uh-huh. a freelancer like grappling with doubt is part of it like that's mm-hmm. how you actually keep go like how do you keep going it's it's really with getting the wins along the way cool yeah if, and I guess that's, that's a good question though is like do you bring some kind of structure to comedy? Like, mm-hmm. do how do you organize your day? Like, do you have to-do lists where you're like, ooh, yeah. gotta do this today? Right, yeah. No, what's weird is, like, I never considered myself really type A, you know, or anything like that. But I think I've become more because there's so little structure to a lot of the, like, comedy career stuff that, like, I feel like I need to implement something. Um, and so I have, like, you know, so I guess, you know, I... I always in booking shows or whatever so then that sort of thing is always my calendar so at least I kind of have you know goals to work towards as far as like okay well I've that show that night that one's kind of important so I want to make sure like I have a set list for that and whatever mm-hmm. normally it happens like on the drive over let's be real but yeah, <laughs> yeah. but like you know ideally yeah I, I kind of try to prep for certain milestones that are shows but that um, I, I mm-hmm. think just that alone like the fact like prepping on your way to the show says mm-hmm. something about how long you've been doing it how much confidence you have because mm-hmm. uh maybe it's a personality type but i feel like for me if i'm gonna give a talk a five minute talk mm-hmm. and because like, i don't do that a lot i'm like preparing five like two like two months in advance oh, and i'm like i gotta yeah, make sure yeah. i get all this down but like the fact that you've been doing it so long it can I mean, I guess it's like, yeah, it's that and it's like the frequency of shows. So it's like sometimes I'll have weeks where I'm doing like a show every day or something. And that's even not as much as like a lot of people, a lot of stand ups do. But um, in L.A., maybe about standard or or a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so I can't necessarily prepare too far because it's like, well, then I got one tomorrow. So I got to prepare for that one. Right. So, yeah. So it ends up being a little last minute. But um, but then the, the I mean, the stakes of these shows is so much lower than actually like a talk or anything that would be like a scheduled event sure, I guess. Uh-huh. yeah um i guess the equivalent in stand-up might be like if i'm trying to get a tape to submit for certain things you know maybe like a late night set or something like that then that would obviously be a big deal and that's all about like even prepping for a big set could be doing other sets right so right that makes like sense yeah that, that makes works. a lot of uh-huh, sense uh-huh. yeah um so yeah you were saying just we we're talking about like the to-do list checklist mm, type yeah. stuff and mm-hmm. and the one thing would be just like the preparing for shows and and yeah. kind of scheduling them out and then totally. i guess how else do you yeah well you know yourself? okay so here's the like weird gross thing that i do now is i have a <laughs> i can't <laughs> wait to hear this um <laughs> so i have like uh, a spreadsheet that I call my dreams spreadsheet. Oh, I love it. It's gross. Yeah, like I hate like the woo-woo type stuff, yeah, yeah. like a vision board. Uh-huh. Right. It's like that, yeah. right? Well, you know, and so I kind of was like, okay, well, here's the weird thing. Sometimes I'll go into like meetings or I'm talking to just a friend or something and they'll be like, so what have you done? And I'm like, what have I done? And then, you know, I mm. like try to flash back into something like I've done and I can't remember anything. But I think it's just because, you know, it's like a little hard to keep track of what I've done when they're not really like tangible things. So there's often things where like I'll list, oh, you know, I had that, you know, I pitched that thing, that like Mm -hmm. show to this network or whatever. And like, sure, it's not like a real show on television right now, but it's still like a win in that I got to do that and that they, you know, it could be happening, right? Things like that. So I'm trying to like keep track of sort of these works in progress. And then that way I can feel as if like, you know, I kind of know that I'm working on stuff, I guess. Otherwise, because maybe I've been such a like, I've been so used to being like, well, I got to wait till it's on the television for it to count, you know, right. in the past. And if you do that, like it, it just, well, you'll never have a win for like years. You yeah. Know? And that's and then really happens, disheartening. Yeah. Uh-huh. What happens when your joke gets cut and then you're right. like, you're and then you're like, bank oh, on that. then it doesn't even count. But it's like, no, I mean, you know, cause like, oh, here's a weird, funny thing. I worked the first show I worked on, like, um, it was take my wife and it was a sitcom, um, about the lives of Cameron uh, Esposito and Rhea Butcher, who are two comedians um, who are married to each other. And they basically, like, we did a whole season, eight episodes, and then it didn't air for a really long time. Like, it was basically, like, on CISO, which was this sort of digital network of NBC. And basically, they, like, shut it down. So they're like, oh, yeah, so, like, all that stuff, yeah, it's not it's not going to happen. <laughs> and oh, so we're just like, no. oh, okay. Well, I mean, you know, I still got paid. I still like learned yeah. so much. So I shouldn't. So at that point I was like, well, yeah, I can't necessarily think of it at like 
when it airs it's a thing because then stuff out of your control can happen and then you have to just realize like oh we had like a great time making it i learned a lot um and then eventually got released so that was exciting oh but, that's amazing yeah, yeah yeah thank god but um but you know it was like that sort of thing could happen all the time i think i was in a like I did this MTV show where they, you did like stand up and then you like acted out your stand up set. And I was in a couple episodes of that and it got canceled like before those aired. So, like, <laughs> you know, I mean, all these things happen all the time. But yeah. I think that was like one of the first things that happened when I moved out here. And I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess I was kind of counting on that in a weird way, like in my mind. Yeah. And I can't do that anymore because then, you know, then you're going to just feel like things aren't working out even when it's very when, normal uh-huh. yeah you should be able to look back on it and say it was a great experience yeah, and yeah. i think it's about managing expectations yeah yeah and not like kind of thinking oh this is gonna be like expecting this to be the big thing or at least a right, really right. big like, thing that's okay, gonna help that's gonna change my life like launch no. you to the next yeah, step. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it can be really challenging like you, you said it, it happens all the time I've had um, a couple friends that worked on a Comedy Central pilot called Delco mm. Proper. It's about like outside of Philadelphia area and they did cool. a web series that did well. And then the pilot, I don't even know if I can talk about this. I don't, I think I can. <laughs> but like, yeah, the pilot didn't get picked up and right, now they're right, like, yeah. but still it's like. It happens, but oh, yeah. It's so frustrating. Oh, it's like yeah, you put everything, uh-huh. like all your time and energy into this thing for like maybe a year, or maybe six months. Mm-hmm. And then for it not to work out, you're like, shit, all right, now what do I do? But then that's part of following an untraditional path is that like right. you got to dust yourself off and just yeah just be like there's more where that came from i guess right uh-huh. right yeah and I, I, find, I feel the same way about people uh stealing things like oh, I, uh-huh. i've had people take my videos and yeah. upload it to their channels and i'm like oh, what a, uh-huh. uh, like i don't really care that much i don't I guess if they're making money off of it, if I, that would just right. be weird and, and i wouldn't like, like it but situation yeah <laughs> I would hope, uh-huh. yeah but then i'm like but, ah. yeah why too much trouble. <laughs> I'm not going to stress about it. I'm yeah, not yeah. actually, well, this happens all the time with our documentary minimalism. And like mm-hmm. people email me all the time where like people just up, they just steal it and then they upload it to YouTube for free. Oh. And okay. then so I get like all the time. It's like 10, I, when we first put it out, it was like 10 to 15 times a week. Oh, geez. New uploads would be popping Whoa, up. Whoa, uh-huh. Yeah. I see. Yeah. It's so a then, big business. But yeah, like, so I would just kind of forward them along and we would issue the, the copyright claim through mm-hmm. YouTube. It doesn't take a long time. It's a pretty quick process. But cool. like at the same time, I'm like... I'm not going to waste any extra time and energy on people stealing yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's a little bit different in comedy. That becomes a big thing, right? Yeah. Like where Stealing jokes. Sort stealing of thing. jokes. Yeah, yeah. I wonder about that. Because like a lot of the jokes stealing conversations are oftentimes... Like it's hard. Like I, I do feel like if you're a big comic, it's like so not worth it to steal a joke, you know? Right. Because at that point, it's like you have so much to lose. Honestly, just tell like a worse joke that you made up, you know? Right. You already made it. <laughs> right. You're... So I kind of feel like, yeah, it's not actually their intention or that it's like maybe something where they, you know, oftentimes comedians have writers and then a writer like accidentally like watched them and then they forgot and then they wrote it down and then nobody checked it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so that's probably where it comes more uh-huh. often than not. But, yeah, who knows? but it's also the... Like, obviously, there's where it's if it's just like a, a paragraph that's just pulled, then it's obvious. But, like, there's mm-hmm. so many themes and types of jokes yeah, that are just so hard. closely related. Uh-huh. And I would say, like, for my own, I mean, obviously, nobody's paying attention to what I'm saying. But I think that, like, <laughs> if I ever am worried that I joke, like, like, I think I've particularly been focused on saying, like, doing comedy bits that are very personal to me because then it's like well obviously i mean nobody lived my life i hope so <laughs> there's like well some there's a lot of people out there. out there so who knows but yeah but yeah that i kind of feel like well then that kind of makes it copy proof even if in the back of my head i accidentally watched that on something then you know something and it came back out like i feel like it's less likely to happen if it's something that's like a story from my life that actually happened right or like my talking about like my family or or this ex- specific If somebody experience. else starts using those jokes, then you'd be like, wait a minute. Yeah, what? Your dad's yeah. name's not Vincent. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, you liar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so. to putting the, was that obvious from the beginning to like put your, your personal life into your comedy? I think so. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I did it a little bit because I was worried about, you know, just accidentally saying the same stuff and being the same comedian as other people. Mm. So there's a lot of that. I think also like being... Like, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I like it a lot, I think, because I think when I say things that are personal, it makes me feel like, oh, I'm like contributing to the conversation rather than just like trying to, you know, throw out stuff that people maybe have heard before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I guess there's that. 
I think a little bit more I mean especially now like obviously a huge conversation about like representation and like different you know diverse stories and things like that a lot of buzzwords but I think that like I feel I always felt like going out there and being a comedian and being this like a young you know woman and Asian American whatever um definitely felt like oh you know I, I should try to like bring that into it a little bit more so that I'm not trying to you know just be like oh I'm here to tell jokes which I think is totally valid as well but I think personally for my own journey I was like yeah I kind of want to you know bring that into the conversation and acknowledge it because that's kind of fun right um and it's not a lot there's not a lot of us so it's kind of cool to be like oh, okay yeah I get to be that I get to be another you know person from this demographic and hopefully other people can relate to it and I feel like I've gotten a lot of response from people you know other young women or like other Asian American folks and I like that a lot because I kind of feel like that's what I would what I liked watching when I was younger too a lot Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. I think sometimes Mm -hmm. people need to be able to see somebody like them that's had a similar background to them Mm -hmm. making it and doing well um to kind of give them the encouragement to to step out and try it themselves totally yeah yeah even just like doing it themselves like I think yeah outside of just because sometimes it'll just be like oh that joke is sort of like my experience or something like that like mm-hmm. I I tell a joke which I uh about oh I tell a joke about dating a white guy <laughs> and I think that's like very common now you know like Asian white uh couples yeah my girlfriend's Asian <laughs> oh, okay amazing yeah. here we go so you know so I'm always like so one of my things is like yeah you know if you like we're in LA like if you go outside and throw a rock you'll probably hit one of us right yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah don't yeah. do that that's a hate crime but uh, <laughs> that's but great. you know like and I think that's, that's funny really because every so often and it's probably mainly in LA but I'll do that uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in my relationship and things and there will be like an Asian woman in the crowd or like an Asian woman white man yeah. couple yeah. and I just like to see them either squirm or like laugh really hard because they understand <laughs> right that's, <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. that's amazing that's so good I feel like my girlfriend is less Asian than she is Australian sure like yeah. that and that's mm-hmm. one of those things right that you get it's like oh where are you from she's like Australia yeah, and yeah. like no where you like, like oh, from but- from <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, like, what does that oh, mean? It's the thing of poor. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, no, that's a big thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who said, I forget who said that, had that joke. Oh, I forget his name, but he's like, basically what they're asking is, why aren't you white? Because <laughs> nobody has a white person. Like, where right, are you from, right. from? Right, yeah, because... Like, yeah, I guess I'm from Jersey. So strange. No, but where are you from? Italy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like nobody's ever asked me that once. That's but funny. I don't know. Uh-huh. Part of Why me is like, white? That's yeah, uh-huh. but part of me is also like the forgiving side of me is that like, uh, they're just curious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're, you know what I mean? Maybe they don't know a lot of totally people yeah. of color. They probably don't. Yeah, they probably don't. They probably well, because if uh-huh. they did, they wouldn't ask they would, those questions. They would realize, right? They'd already have discussed this with yeah. their friends. I think, like, yeah, I get that a lot, and I think it's so weird for me too. And I talk with my sister about this all the time because, obviously, you know, same upbringing. Um, we, uh, our great grandparents were immigrants, so we're like fourth generation or third generation, depending how you count that. So um, we've always been from Southern California, and uh, and our parents too. And I think we're always fielding those questions, and it's weird because it's like, at what point does it end? Because literally, like, I'm sure my grandparents got this question. I'm sure my parents get this question. I'm sure I, you yeah. know, I get this question. So yeah, I mean, it's weird. It's a weird scenario, and like, uh, and I mean, it doesn't make me more or less American that I like my family's been here. But I think that is also what they're asking, you know. And they're like, well, you know, are you? Are, well, you're American, but like. Yeah, it's really like a visual thing because clearly, yeah. like, I don't know what else to tell you know. I don't know yeah. why else you're like asking. Like, it's not my this. accent, right? Right. Uh, yeah, and I, I guess, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I have a lot of people try to like speak a different language to me, or, or uh, yeah, or ask if I speak a certain language yeah. because they want to return with that language, and I'm like, I don't even know those languages, even though you might think I do. <laughs> yeah, not um, even close. Because, I, yeah, I did get that uh-huh. in Italy though. I oh, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. People uh-huh. stopping me, and then Natalie, she speaks a bit of Spanish, so mm-hmm. she could actually understand what they were saying oh, cool. right and Somewhere. i was but i'm like olive garden italian i'm not like actual <laughs> like i don't i'm got it got it like grew up eating like pasta and ketchup mm. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> fine moi that's yeah. the thing it's like oh, yeah it's crazy because like how many generations removed probably the same for me like my great grandparents came from italy and it's like you're so far removed from that um do you find yourself uh, trying to still be connected with the the culture of your your Grand, great grandparents and I mean 
I don't even know. It's like, I yes, of course. Like, I think there's still things ingrained in, in like, oh, you know, food weed and, like, things that are cultural technically um, that are probably, uh, I'm Chinese and Japanese, probably one of the two. Um, but I think that's the other cool thing that I have talked a lot about recently um, with my sisters. I think we kind of feel like we're even less, like, I think if I was one, or the other, I would be more inclined to be like, oh, I should really embrace. But because I'm two different things, like Chinese and Japanese, I feel like, well, I mean, I don't know, I don't want to pick one over the other. So I guess I'm probably <laughs> neither. You know, what I mean? like I just, right. I think it's like a weird thing too, where like, you know, maybe my dad would have pushed for us to learn Japanese or do more Japanese things. My mom would have pushed for us to do more Chinese things, uh, had they been the only person uh, to like be our parent. But like, because yeah. it was kind of like, oh well we should have an equal footing. So why don't we just both be zero? It was just like, you know, it's just like a weird thing. I think when you're two different things that are multiple things, I think you just feel like, well, I guess I'm American and that yeah. like makes it kind of an even playing field. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think that's probably a good thing. I think we're all kind of just like our nationalities are just diluting. Right. Down yeah. To I mean, and one. of course, yeah, that's not to say that anyone who's like a single like ethnicity or background is, Oh, you're more that. No, of course not. But right. yeah, I think I've always thought like, well, maybe if I was one or the other, I would have felt a little bit more inclined to really pursue it but because I'm too it's just been like oh well I'm gonna just not try either right yeah I think that there <laughs> but uh yeah I, uh-huh. I just saw uh there's ugly delicious is a new Netflix Ooh, did I you watched see this? it oh, yeah, you did? I watched fun. it too uh-huh, yeah that to me is one of my favorite uh food doc series mm-hmm, but like mm-hmm. exploration of food and yeah, also like awesome. like you know people that's like that's not real Mexican food right, and it's, right. it's just that yeah, conversation of the whole thing yeah but like oh, man. that dude what is his name David David Chang I David think? Chang yeah and, yeah he just, uh, the fact that he's like, we'll go to Taco Bell. He delivered yeah, Domino's yeah, he in it. Yeah, loves Domino's. Yeah, right. I love Domino's. Like, do you love Domino's? I do. I mean, I, you know, I'll just eat any pizza, let's be real. <laughs> but yeah, Domino's, great. Yeah. $7 carrot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit different, though, out here <laughs> because you guys didn't have, you guys don't really have good pizza. Right. So I hear. <laughs> I just, I just can't believe that. Like, I, yeah. Well, and I don't understand do you why. Have any- I mean, I don't know. Maybe because you guys all like Domino's. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I guess we're just like happy in our terrible, uh, considered to be not great it's about, pizza. You, you've managed your expectations yeah. with pizza. Okay. Yes. There yeah. we go. Definitely, ignorance is bliss. Maybe <laughs> when it comes to pizza. Sure. Um, uh-huh. But it just seems weird that like I don't know if it's the ingredients or something. But right. I don't know if you, have you had like it's a New York contrast. pizza or I mean you you lived in Boston so yeah 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 I guess the pizza was more Better. exciting. <laughs> You don't know. I uh, yeah, I don't know. You I don't. don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh-huh. I, I I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe there's nothing there. I just because uh, I I did like like Domino's and like mm-hmm. coming from like middle class family, not much money. Like it was like Fridays we'd order yeah. Domino's because it was super cheap. Um, but then there was there like I think as you get older, you start to acquire a taste for mm. better foods. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, like I didn't eat sushi until I was like. 12. 20 or something mm. just because my it was right, just spaghetti yeah, yeah. every day like sure, it was sure, spaghetti yeah. and butter and that's all we ate mm-hmm. um did you have you started to get in more into food as yeah. you've been older or oh, have you yeah, always definitely. been into it oh yeah because i think i also just i think when i was little i just thought i didn't like to eat like i like i was very active and it was like well i'd rather be doing cartwheels you know time to eat wasting time yeah. um but I think also like, oh, my mom cooked a lot. So that was really nice of her, Jesus. But also mm-hmm. like, I think we kind of had the same stuff all the time. So I was like, okay, this is my palate. You know, I like this and I like this. And I like, still love all those. Like I crave a lot of those homemade things that she made growing up because that's kind of just like the base of my palate. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely mm-hmm. I think when I, as I've gotten older, it's like, oh wow, like all these different things. And I think just generally like, all of our willingness to like spend money on food has increased a lot. I think it really has. has. Yeah, yeah. Because like, you know, I mean, friends are always wanting to go out and it's like, you know, trying different things. And and then you're kind of like, well, you know, experiences. We are spending money on experiences. Yeah, that's what I would say with like the whole minimalism <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, it's an experience. Yeah, right? You don't have to take uh, anything and, home and with And then you have to spend way too much money on <laughs> right, food. But, right. uh, and it also, if you do it too much, then I feel like it kind of takes the joy out of it a little sure, bit. Sure, yeah, it becomes you know, normalized, I yeah. guess, or whatever. That, uh-huh. that was a part of Ugly Delicious. That was like the different... Um, how like what was I don't know if it was Korean food in LA has started to get really big the Korean barbecue yeah. and mm-hmm. it's just all these different kinds of um 
uh, food that I mean, look at Chipotle. Mm-hmm. Like that wasn't a thing. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I mean, you could I guess you could say Taco Bell before that, but it's not like right, right. I think there's a quality so difference yeah, there. Yeah. But the fact that it's just kind of spreading out all over the country. And I was in Ohio last week. Mm-hmm. And it's like they got Tex Mex, and mm-hmm. I mean, obviously it's not real Mexican food, but like no, still but the yeah. the fact that people it's in the middle there. of the country yeah, are enjoying fun. Mexican uh-huh. food is pretty interesting. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because and it's funny because what was it? Or I guess just like. Chinese food, I guess my so my grandma lives in like uh, Alhambra, Monterey Park out here, which is like where all the great Chinese food is. So we'll always get Chinese food when we visit her and things like that. Um, but oftentimes people think like Chinatown out here is where you'd get good Chinese food. And honestly, I'd like never been to Chinatown growing up. And I think it's kind of like it was kind of more like touristy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of people move out here like there's no good Chinese food. But it's like, oh, there's so much good Chinese food. And there's so many like great Chinese people. But like they all live over there. So you got to go over there. Yeah. Right. So it's like it's kind of funny because and slowly, you know, I mean, Yelp and like everything is shifting people where they should go for good food and stuff. So maybe that's like a good and bad thing. But yeah, I think there's probably yeah. two sides to that. Yeah. yeah. That, that's one thing Natalie has said. My, my girlfriend, she's. Mm-hmm. Singaporean <clears throat> and like her mom uh, like culturally Chinese and like what would they do like, I don't think it was dim sum or something like some mm. some weekend cool. uh, Chinese I, I actually experienced it it was just a trip like in Sydney and it's oh wow uh-huh. but she's like oh that's like Chinese American food isn't what you would get oh okay yeah in for China. sure uh-huh. um, and that I don't know no, yeah, I think that's probably, I mean, that's definitely true. Also, because it's funny because we say Chinese food, but it's like China's huge and there's like so many places, you know, so many different foods even within it. Right. So like you're also just getting, I don't know what section yeah. of food. Even American food. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I literally have no We don't know idea what we're talking what about. I'm talking about, but I think, you know, my grandma's Chinese, so yeah, <laughs> she yeah. lives in, you know, Monterey Park out here. So, <laughs> so I, I kind of know, know what I'm talking I about. I kind of know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I... Sometimes I just find myself just like bullshitting too much. Oh no no! <laughs> Where like I pretend like I'm pretending like I know what I'm talking about, but I oh man, to... I mean that's a great that's a great skill though. I think I, I am trying to bullshit more all the time. <laughs> I think <laughs> just... bullshitting uh-huh. is an art form. Oh yeah, and to the point where like you're not like uh, putting your reputation at risk. Sure, just bullshitting just enough, just mm-hmm. saying. Just enough to get by yeah. that people won't call you out. Like that was my biggest fear as a freelancer for so long mm-hmm. is that people were just going to call me out and be like, do you know what you're doing? And I'm like, no, I have no yeah, idea. Yeah. Oh, that question? Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, no, no. Um, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, I mean, it's like imposter syndrome, but yeah. like times a thousand because it's like you don't necessarily have like the structure. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, that you know, I feel that all the time, but I definitely feel like I have, I feel like the, the bullshit meter like in general is like still above like no bullshit like like everybody's bullshitting so it's yeah. sort of like well you kind of got a bullshit to just hit the zero and then and then you know maybe there's people who bullshit a little more and people who bullshit a little less yeah you know yeah. That, that's true and i think uh-huh. that there it's like uh it's it is an art form because mm-hmm. you you don't want to be like a really good bullshitter like that like you just want to be good enough that eventually at some point the line blurs and you're not bullshitting anymore but you don't realize it and yeah. you're like oh i'm actually doing this now like right, actually right. i'm like and sometimes it's even like giving people advice or talking to beginners and you're like oh wow like i actually do know what i'm talking Ooh, about yeah yeah because you, then relatively like yeah yeah you're finally able to see what you can actually say yeah but then you just kind of fall back into it are we talking about anything <laughs> hey man it's it's an art <clears throat> it's an art it's an art do you travel a lot um not as much as i have i guess i've done you know comedy stand-ups definitely travel a lot and it's something that I've kind of done I did a little bit of like college touring and so I go to like little like small small select towns I guess or cities and Mm -hmm. and places I would have never gone uh otherwise and like perform at the college stand-up and then um leave (laughs) yeah so did that I got to headline um once in Hawaii which was really cool that's cool I want to go back um and yeah, and I'm always looking to. I, I went to Seattle recently for like a comedy festival, so comedy festivals also bring me places. Um, but I, I guess just for like, I haven't traveled just for like leisure in a little bit. No, that's not true. I don't know. I've gone place certain places, and I think um, I'm lucky to have a lot of friends who live in different places, so I kind of have an excuse, and I can like crash mm-hmm. with them, you know. Yeah, that's um, great. And I, I traveled a bit after graduating. Very cliche. Yeah, Did no, like but a that, European trip. Oh, that's great though. Cool. I don't think enough people. I don't think mm-hmm. enough people actually do that. 
Because it's like there's such a, a pressure to just start working Got and it. start mm-hmm. making money. Totally. And it's uh, not like in, in Australia, it's they have, um, <clears throat> I always get it wrong. I think it's gap year or yeah, I think it's gap year, something like mm-hmm. that, where they take one year. And I think after, they maybe uh-huh. work and, you know, study or do something abroad. But it's mm-hmm. it's the year after they graduate where they just, they spend more time traveling. Cool. And exploring. Yeah, that's so smart. And it's smart. not as much a part of our culture i don't think no yeah i know like a lot of friends or it was kind of encouraged at my college for people to take a gap year in between high school and college which i think is also really smart i didn't do it because you know there's such a rush to like oh and then go into 13th grade you know um but it's (laughs) like yeah i don't know but i i definitely um after i was excited to and because i think it was the you know the luxury of being like well you know i can always start comedy when i get back I didn't like sign a contract where I have to start right after I graduate, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely had friends who jumped right in or like had, I think the the friend I traveled with, like he was very sad in the sense that like he had actually signed on to start after. So he had this very, or like you start working at Google. So he like started a few months after graduating. So he had this set period of time where he's like, I could do anything. Mm. I don't have to worry about a job. I was a little stressed during it because I was like, I don't have anything going on and I'm draining my bank account. But it was a very like good experience and I don't regret it. But I definitely think that like, you know, we had a lot of, we were very lucky to be able to do it. Yeah. Uh I mean, it's, well, uh, I was going to say for people that actually go into the workforce that start working after college, yeah, it's like, that's the first time that you just realize that this is forever (laughs) because there's no summers, there's no Uh winter breaks. Like you don't really get time off like that. But I mean, Mm -hmm. we take like a little bit of an untraditional route Mm -hmm. where like freelancing and not necessarily I mean you, you kind of when you work on a show it's essentially right. full-time it's like a full-time job but yeah then, but it's so short just yeah. in the length like you know I think the last the show I worked on it was like eight weeks or something so it's like I'm kind of on summer right now yeah but yeah, um but right. yeah of course that wouldn't exist in like a regular full-time job um and so so yeah so I guess like it is daunting if you're just kind of going and you're like well I don't see the end of the tunnel this is it um, that yeah. could be stressful but some uh-huh. people love it Love yeah, their jobs. yeah, and then they find out that you know. I mean, if they love their jobs, you don't have to work a day in your life or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. There's that. Um, do you? So the, I, I, I kind of like that that structure where like it's not massive commitments for you for for certain shows where it's sure. like you can work on it for eight weeks or a couple months yeah. and then you can go nice. and and kind of reassess the path that you want to go on. Totally. Like I think, yeah, that is really nice because I, I think, you know, say you don't like the people you work with. I mean, luckily I haven't had that experience yet, but like then you can be like, well, you know what? I just have to like smile for like three more weeks and then I yeah. can get out of here and try to find a new place to work. Um, yeah, so that's great. Or you feel like you can, yeah, readjust your path if you're like, I mean, for me, I've been working as a writer's assistant and it's cool. I mean, I still get a lot of the writer writerly experience, but I think there's a little bit of like, okay, I think for the next one, I'm really going to try to go hard and try to like graduate to that like writer position or try to find something where I like start my own project or something. And I think it gave me a little fire, you know, under me so that I could, uh, move forward um so it was nice that it was kind of short so I could not feel like I was stagnating for Mm -hmm. too too long um and and I think before I started I definitely didn't feel that way before I started I was like I'm happy for anything and like this is a great opportunity I love rap you know um so (laughs) yeah so I think it was good to you know have that sort of growing period and then cut it off and then be able to kind of start fresh and now I'm thinking about you know what's my next move I guess the trade-off is like yeah I mean you're not employed for very long so there's a there's definitely like panic like oh god now I gotta, yeah. you know now I'm not making any like income that's steady so I got to figure out you know get more coding jobs or like figure out how to displace that by doing a college show or something so it's very uh it's like a lot more panic but I think it's a good trade-off in it for my life because I'm lucky enough to be like well you know I can code if like the the day comes where I have no money um Mm -hmm. and and I can um you also work from home so I can like work on other projects while I'm doing that so yeah I think that that. Mm -hmm. that's definitely the biggest uh struggle when you're like we talked about before was just dealing with the doubt but then there are these lulls as a freelancer Mm -hmm. as somebody who's on an untraditional path where <clears throat> where work is slow and that's especially true in the very beginning when you're not getting paid as much when it, the work right. is a little bit harder you're like all right like I just need to stick it out until I get another gig right. or mm-hmm. another job 
um, how do you find yourself approaching those situations where they're, you know, you might be busy in terms of like doing work or doing stand up, but you don't have that next job totally. in sight. Oh yeah. I mean, been there a few times now where I'm kind of like, you know, you reach that peak, like, because I'm at, when I'm fresh off a job, I'm like, Oh, I need to take time to myself to like work on a certain project so I can really, you know, capitalize on this free time. But then sort of towards the end when you're like, Oh shoot, I'm running out of uh, time. I got to find another, my next thing. Yeah. I guess it's kind of like, keeping in the right mindset where like I don't feel as if I need to just sign up for anything where it could be bad right um uh so I I kind of am always looking for things but I also know and keep in mind that especially with this business or like things like that it's like one day you have no no prospects and the next day you're already working (laughs) like that does happen I guess like with this job it was like I was like oh man you know I don't know what I'm gonna do and you know I'm constantly like going out you know auditions or meetings and things like that so like whether you know you're kind of just at this point I'm like well I mean maybe it'll happen or like I shouldn't get my hopes up but Mm -hmm. um but with this job too it was sort of like I got an email like at 10 p.m one night and they're like can you come in tomorrow to like interview and then it was like okay you're gonna start in two days so you know I mean obviously the Monday of that week I was like oh this is I don't know maybe I should leave this all together, you know, like yeah. you just kind of lose a lot of hope. And then by, and then I just have to remember by like the end of that week, I was already like, oh, I have my next thing. Weird. You don't, you never know when it's just going to click yeah. and things are going to start complete, happening. Yeah. Complete yeah. Uh, surprise. There's no gradual build in the same way that maybe I thought life would be like, you know? Oh my God. Right. It's, it's crazy. Cause I've been doing the podcast and, and like creating original content for a year. Sweet. And then it was <clears throat> two months ago, I started to release like more minimalism videos and then my channel just started to grow like crazy. Awesome. And then YouTube featured me as a creator on the rise. Oh, wow. Literally in two months, uh-huh. I got 70,000 subscribers. Oh, gosh. Awesome. It was So, yeah, it was unreal. Like, the graph and like, like a spike. Uh-huh. But it was the day before like things started to grow. Mm-hmm. I would have, I, I remember talking to Nat being like, this is tough. <laughs> this yeah. is tough. I've been doing this for a year. I feel like, like I'm putting out good content, good mm-hmm. material, but nobody's watching it. Like I, I don't mm-hmm. have no nothing is growing in the way that I would expect it. But then mm-hmm. it's just next minute I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> okay, yeah. things are happening now. Now totally. Now what do I do? That's awesome. Yeah, and I mean obviously like that's cool because it's like even when you didn't think you were building, like you were right. So I guess it's sort of keeping in mind like okay, it doesn't feel like anything is externally like the feedback's not coming right now that I would want, but just know that like then at least you'll be ready when that thing hits, you know. Right. I guess that's like a big part of entertainment, but also what I've noticed with stand up is it's like, so like kind of being ready when something hits is like super important, right? And like, I don't know if I kind of, so I got very lucky like in, in my junior year of college, I got to do Last Comic Standing. And so that was like kind of a moment where it's like, oh, hey, like you get some airtime. So maybe be funny, right? And like, <laughs> don't I, screw it up. yeah, don't screw it up. Um, and I mean, I had like also nothing to lose. Like I was in such a lucky position because I think there are obviously comics there who had been doing it for much longer. So it was sort of just like, you know, be somewhat funny and everybody will be like, wow, you know, the, the dog can talk kind of thing. Like it's like, <laughs> you're young and you can tell a joke. Yeah. Um, but that was definitely a time when like a lot of things started coming in. And I think I wasn't necessarily ready at that time. And I was still in school and things, but like, you know, okay, so what's you know do you have any like writing samples or like things that we can really like sink our teeth into and I think that at that moment I was just like well I want to be a stand-up comedian so I have stand-up and Mm -hmm. yeah I can kind of do other stuff like here's little short things that I've written but I um but yeah I definitely know like I learned from that and like a few other things that have happened where I'm like okay well honestly like if things aren't happening right now this is a great time for me to like really build up what I have ready when that thing hits like you're obviously banking a lot on the fact that something else will happen but but I think that's kind of important you know just like knowing that no matter what you're still like working towards something and then you know that thing might spike yeah being ready for the opportunity I feel like is the biggest takeaway there and just making sure that because like we said just it's going to come out of nowhere Mm -hmm. I remember in college I got uh, this was like my dream job was uh, college humor. Like when mm. I was in college, like they were making like the the awesome. best videos yeah, and the yeah, most like innovative huge. videos. Jake and Amir were just starting to, to blow up. Mm-hmm. And then I like, my brother had saw that they were hiring a video editor <clears throat> because it was one of the guy's blogs that wasn't really that big. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of on the low. Cool. Not mm-hmm. a lot of people were applying. 
So I applied, which is my resume, mm-hmm. and I was a junior in college. And then I, uh, so I like from Philly, I was going to school at Temple University, and I took mm-hmm. the bus up to New York, and then I interviewed with them, just totally unprepared. Actually, you know what happened? No, before. So they asked, asked me by email, can you send us some examples of some sketches that you've shot mm-hmm. okay. and edited? And then I, I didn't have any, none that I was willing to send them. Sure. Uh-huh. So that weekend, I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, let me just, uh, I'll send it to you, you know, soon or whatever. <laughs> right, right, right. I don't know, just wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then that That's weekend, good. I shot two sketches. I wrote and oh, like wow. shot two Amazing. sketches, yeah. uh, which is my like college buddies in my dorm. Mm-hmm. And then I sent it to them on that Monday. And oh. then mm-hmm. he was like, yeah, come on up to, you know, or not, not come on up because they didn't realize I wasn't in New York. I was still in college. Oh, okay. I was just kind of, like a... I was bullshitting. <laughs> right, right, right. No, that's great. And then I got up. I didn't get the job, <laughs> but oh, I was yeah. like, uh-huh. just because I don't think I had the actual experience to, to make it, got it but uh-huh. it was being prepared for that moment. Like it would have been totally. a lot uh-huh. easier and a lot less stressful <laughs> if I actually had work. Sure, sure. If you didn't have to, you know, create, <laughs> create it all overnight. Create, yeah, yeah, fair yeah, enough. yeah. But a little bit more, um, a little more fair if you had more time. I right. Suppose. But yeah, but yeah I, I that's yeah. one of those big things. That's um, cool. Uh-huh. What does it mean to so for you to actually make it in comedy? Ooh, um, actually make it. I don't know. That's so interesting because that to me sounds like such a like, okay, here's like the line and then you like cross over the line and you made it. And then mm-hmm. I, I've learned a little bit or like at least seen that like it can just be so, so many ups and downs and that's scary, but I think it's good because it kind of keeps you on your toes. Like, um, I mean, I would love to, I think like great milestones would be, um, getting a special and I think that doesn't necessarily have to be an hour long because I think you know everyone's kind of toying with the idea of like oh there's like 15 minutes that's coming out on Netflix soon for some folks and like half hours um and I remember watching like the Comedy Central half hours when I was younger and like loving those so I think getting like anything like that would be awesome because I think it's just sort of like a cool way to like write and basically perform at the same time Mm -hmm. stand up obviously but like uh having that block to do would be great um so that would be a great milestone I don't know if that but I that definitely doesn't mean you're set right I mean like that's kind of like the first step and then I I think it's always been a dream of mine to like host a late night show or a talk show of some sort um and again you know that's sort of like a uh that's always changing now like everything that maybe that we set goals when we were younger like I feel or is all different now and like in in that scenario the late night show is now possibly more attainable because they're just you know everybody's trying to get the next thing so I feel like they're they bought a lot there's like four on Netflix and like five you know what I mean there's just like a ton of different ones and before it used to be maybe like the tonight show and then oh now we have like you know the the later one yeah so yeah, so it's even cool that special. there's like a ton yeah, yeah it was yeah. just HBO exactly. or the Comedy Central right 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 and so that was it Yes, but now it's uh-huh. like, but you could also make your own thing. You could do a podcast, you can put it out there uh-huh. and then, um, that could be the, the door in. I mean, mm-hmm. that's one of the things too, that's interesting about comedy is that it's no longer this, um, <clears throat> this path that's kind of, everybody has to go down. Like right. it and was nice. Uh-huh. Yeah. So now you can kind of make it yourself. Totally. Um, totally. How, like in what ways and like, how does like social media play into all this? And like, how do you view all that stuff? Because it's, it, I feel like it's these days it's not as much about uh like if you have a good voice if you're a singer mm. a lot of times that's not enough right no you need yeah. to be able to dance <laughs> you need right. to be able to perform yeah, you need thing. to be able to like have an image and all this other right. stuff like how does all this play in for you with oh, comedy great question yeah i mean i i've definitely like evolved a little bit from so i, I mean I would say I got a lot from YouTube. You know, I got a lot out of YouTube, just like uh, had a video on Laugh Factory channel, things like that. And that sort of gave me visibility when like normally at that level as a stand-up comedian, like nobody should be seeing, you know what I mean? And I think, and it worked out in my favor, but like for sure um, that already changed the game for so many people. And so, you know, it's kind of figuring the next thing. I think uh, now, you know, I've, I've posted little videos to Instagram. Some of my videos have like gone around on Instagram and that's been really interesting. Of course, it has to be less than a minute. So that's like 
not at all a yeah. joke, right? I saw your one uh, this morning I watched. It was like uh, something like, this is a video of me burning a joke on oh, Instagram. Right. I mean, yeah, that too. Like a lot of stand-ups uh, that I really respect are like, oh, don't put anything online because you want to save that for your special, right? Yeah. But I'm like, well, I don't get the special, right? Yeah, so maybe you gotta burn special. stuff. Yeah, to get to that point where people are like, oh yeah, you're funny, like want to make a special? Oh, but you can't use any of those jokes. So it's like, okay, yeah. okay. But yeah, I think there's a way that. to, you know, get there maybe um, and sort of the more traditional ways and stand-up has been around for so long that I think there's also a lot of like purists and more traditionalists that like would look down on maybe a lot of the new social media things coming uh, to the forefront and I mean there's a ton of now like ways to just be a comedian right that didn't exist before like Vine was, when Vine was up like a ton of comedians uh, came out of that and like mm-hmm. obviously stand-ups were like mumbling in the corner because yeah. they're going to open mics and some people are just putting out these funny like six second videos so obviously it seems different and YouTube being the same thing but it's like I mean there's just so many different ways to do it now and I think it's kind of like figuring I want to figure out a way to do it with stand-up as well because I that's kind of where I started from so I like that idea but I think incorporating it with you know Instagram or other things like I see no shame in that whatever you know I want to do it and put put it out there because otherwise nobody's gonna see my stuff like I I really don't do like I'm not doing theaters you know Mm -hmm. I'm doing like five you know three or four people yeah (laughs) three or four people (laughs) will see my stuff yeah Yeah. they're really gonna like it though yeah they love it they love it um but it's very much a a back in my day mentality like people are like back in my day we didn't have this instagram and like a lot of photographers that have been out around for a while Mm. are averse to like making these beautiful instagram feeds because now there's instagram photographers that like i mean quote unquote where they all their work is there that's where their portfolio is that's where they they don't actually have like shows or exhibits or Mm. whatever they're not in magazines that's where their their work is and you gotta adapt you gotta you gotta be able to kind of use this stuff and it doesn't need to define your work maybe in some cases Mm -hmm. it does but um you need i think you need to just experiment around and there's and see see, what clicks see what what clicks what works uh Mm -hmm. and then kind of figure it out for yourself because I guess everybody is so individual that like maybe Instagram works for you maybe it doesn't right <laughs> you know what I mean like Twitter I think for comedians was probably the big mm, thing yeah, right. early I on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's still as popular oh yeah I mean for writers especially it makes a lot of sense like I think I'm I'm like still so terrified of Twitter because really? just the just the tone of Twitter is uh is very uh, argumentative and like you know there's just there's a lot of fights it's a bit political <laughs> and I'm such a, like oh I don't want to fight but I but I understand where people are coming from so so I think uh but I think it's it is a great place for like putting jokes out there I you know I'll, I'll post jokes here and there and it's like oh, okay so it kind of worked there so maybe it'll work on stage you know there's it's like a good place to be how do you deal with that like the the negativity that comes with online it's like it's yeah. different mm-hmm. that in person yeah, you have a heckler every once in a while, but it's like right. you, if they're you're talking to people one on one, nobody's ever going to be like that. This is stupid. Right, right. That's a dumb joke. Yeah, yeah. How Nobody's do you do it? going to come fight me. Right. Um, yeah, no, I I agree. I think it's 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 definitely a thing. Mm-hmm. I well, you know, I I think I had some videos online and and people would like comment on them or they'd like they they you know they're trolls so they like really go through all the measures to find you and my name is is only my name, I guess. So mm-hmm. go on my Facebook, they'll go in my email, you know, things like that. Wow. So it's like a lot. Um, and it doesn't happen all the time, but every so often, if like a, like, especially one of my videos from a while back, I think people take issue with sometimes. And I totally like, and sometimes people have valid things to say and it's like, okay, cool. You know, maybe I respond. I don't know if I've ever responded to like many of these, but sometimes mm-hmm. they're like really bad. And then I think I learned just to, you know, not even look. And, and I think it's, you know, everybody says this, but it's so tempting to look, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and I turned off my notifications, things like that, um, like for YouTube comments or things like that, because I think sometimes I would like wake up to it. Because that's the thing, it's like trolls will like, like oftentimes trolls will exist in the nighttime, right? Um, <laughs> right. So it's like, you know, if they're posting at 3 a.m., I'm not awake, then I wake up to it. It's like, it's not a 10 a.m. thing or like yeah, whatever, like, like, right? Like, you know what I mean? It's just... Yeah. That way to start the day. So. Yeah, you you don't want to start out with somebody who's just destroying your confidence. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it. I'd, I prefer coffee in the morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think you're right, though. There's, mm-hmm. It's about taking control of sure. that. Mm-hmm. And the, the hard thing that I have is, uh, and now I try to like schedule it in where I'll be like maybe an hour a day, I either respond to comments slash check email and just kind of batch it in. Otherwise, I'm just a checker. Like we all are. Right. We're like, I gotta check. Uh-huh. Have I checked email in the past five minutes? I better check again. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. with, but with the comments is tough because 
it's great to see the positive stuff. Yeah. And the people that are affected and yeah, you've made yeah. an impact on somebody's life. Uh, it, that's, how, do you, how do you balance Filter the two? Do you just say, ah, screw it. I'm not going to look at anything. Right, right. It's like, I think sometimes I just have to be like, scrolling and just kind of like look <laughs> I, I feel like i do that too where you're like uh, it's a bad one just yeah, keep going uh, 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 yeah no for sure i just kind of like look for the keywords um <laughs> but no I, I don't know i guess yeah because it is important to to get the positive and i think that's like you know and then the other interesting thing and i think that comes from you know being like a you know being like a woman online is like there could be positive that's actually negative or just like being like oh you know, being creepy. And it's like, well, I don't want that because I'm not telling jokes to be like creeped on, you know? Yeah. So that's also like hard to kind of, how do you take that? You know, it's like, yeah. I don't want to. I feel bad for like, uh, just like female YouTubers, like the oh, kind of I'm shit sure, they have to yeah. go through. Oh. I'm like, shit. Cause I don't get any comments about my appearance. It, the only thing I'll have is like gay guys be like, you're hot. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks <laughs> Thank man. Yeah, like, that's nice. uh-huh. But like, other than that, it's like nobody ever talks about my looks online but they, if you just look at some of these comment yeah, sections it's, for it's some a lot of that yeah but it's, weird. it's just you have to be selective and i don't know yeah. so, but mm-hmm. I, I think there is something to say about just not looking at comments or being yeah. very selective because it's like a double-edged sword it's it's like you are commenting because i made this thing because i wasn't busy looking at comments so it's like, shouldn't I just keep making the stuff oh, that you're enjoying? Yeah, yeah, and rather I mean, than just kind of like soaking it in all the time. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just a weird thing that's like, I think it also, you know, pertains to what, just like Facebook or like any social media where you're like, oh, let's see how many likes I got, you know, because uh, yeah. I think that can just get out of hand in a way where it's like, well, who am I? <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I'm getting a little deep, but it's like, yeah. it's like, well, who am I if I'm just like posting this? Is this me or is this me who wants likes? You know, yeah. if you're posting like a photo or, or a picture or whatever. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's all part of us now. I don't think we can really like deny that, but it's like, it is definitely hard to block it all out. But, but the other thing too about comments and things like that, I feel is like somebody who I don't know um, in real I like I think it's like the threshold for commenting on something can also be very different for different people I guess so like I often think about like the sort of I mean in the troll way of like you know being really mean it's like nobody would do that in person so then maybe I don't count it you know Mm -hmm. and like I mean I don't know if you do that on the positive side but it's like you know I think you take it a little (laughs) bit you know I think you take it no I mean they mean it yeah let's alter Um, our reality yeah (laughs) but I think they like I think you know just sort of taking all the comments like a little bit lighter than just if you know I think the in-person interactions or or somebody writes you a longer email or something like that that I would value more right I mean weighing a little bit more I guess not even value but just sort of thinking about things in like I mean the comment world and the social media world is just like so different yeah sometimes I think it's a you take it with a grain of salt Mm -hmm. and it's like you see all of it as just feedback everything is feedback and that Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you have to listen to all the feedback Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. I once finished a documentary and then I had I sent my friend to get feedback from like maybe like you know, probably a dozen friends. Cool. And this one person uh, didn't get back to me right away, which is totally fine. Like, I, you know, I don't expect it. But then I had already locked the cut. I was done with the film. Mm. And then I got this, all this constructive feedback. Oh, after. <sighs> Sorry, yeah, I'm hard. not going to, uh-huh. I'm not going to read this now because it's oh, not, okay. it's not yeah, helpful yeah. at this point. Point. Right. Yeah, you wouldn't have. I didn't tell been them able that. to go back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said thanks so much for your feedback. Right, right. But a lot of times with feedback, you <laughs> can choose to just push it to the side. Like, is this a YouTube comment? Is this, you know, my parents? Like, maybe they're biased sure. in some way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so then you just have to be really take everything with a grain of salt and yeah. just keep making shit and keep right, putting right. shit out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel that way. Like, it's funny because sometimes I'll have certain jokes that I really like and like, no, like it's, do- it doesn't do very well, like yeah. in a live audience. And that's like another form of feedback. Right. And like, I feel like there are certain jokes where I will just like, no, but it's funny. Right. And I'll yeah. just keep going at it. And like, honestly, I obviously don't want to turn into somebody who's just like not listening at all. But I think that that to me shows like, okay, well, if I really care about this one, I think it's about like fixing the joke, but not totally scrapping it, you know? And like, I think I will kind of, yeah, I mean, I think I I would worry about swaying too much to the crowd too, because then 
you know, I, I mean, I think oftentimes crowds would really just love for me to tell a bunch of fart jokes, you know, and right. that's fine. But I don't know if I want to be always telling fart jokes. Right. There's a uh-huh. there's a balance between yeah. what you want to create and what the audience wants to hear. Right. right. And sometimes mm-hmm. there's a, a perfect marriage and a perfect overlap. Yeah. But a lot of times uh, you just have to figure out and kind of, totally. you know. Figure yeah, out who you want to be. And I like the idea, though, too, of uh, um, not giving up on a joke or not giving up an idea right away. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Just because it's not responding, especially with comedy, because you can just do the same joke two nights back to back and one night it does right. great. The next night it doesn't mm-hmm. do well at all. But <clears throat> there is probably an element there. I think that's part of the craft of, of writing is just always like trying to figure out and like what's the shortest way that I could get this idea across like what's is there a way that I can add something on to this that's going to make it better or is this going to like distract and go on a tangent and you're kind of always in a process right before you film a special or do something like that where it's always kind of tweaking and figuring out the best version of it oh yeah like trimming the fat or like adding more to it Mm -hmm. mixing it in with something you were already thinking of yeah Yeah. totally What, what advice would you give to somebody just getting started out in comedy or writing Mm -hmm. um about approaching the craft like what what do they Uh need to know at that stage yeah i mean starting out i guess i guess like watching a lot and reading a lot too i think helps you develop a taste and i think that like has become something that i really like about this um, job or whatever is that I feel like it's the one thing in my life where I feel like I have a taste and it's and it's specific and I like want to um, and, I, and I think it informs the way I create things too you know if I'm writing a joke I kind of know right away my own opinion and then I want to take it out there as well but like you know I think that's a big part of it because I think there's a I, it might be my personality too where like you know I'm so I'm so in awe of everybody and I think that you know <laughs> wow you can do that like you know even if it's not something most people would think is a big deal I'm just like wow that's awesome yeah but I think when it comes to comedy I'm like oh no I think this is you know this is I find funny and I can actually definitively say that rather than just be in awe of the fact that you're doing it in the first place right so I think that's you know something that I did I learned from watching a lot and reading a lot and um, and I think, you know, I'm slower on the writing side because I think I started more with the performing and stand up and stuff like that. But, uh, but, you know, reading a lot of like comedy writing and scripts and stuff. And I think that's also helped figure out like, okay, well then when I'm writing, I know what I liked and I know what I didn't and I know what I can write to, you know, fit what I think works. And then at least then you're coming from a place of confidence. And then when you put it out there, you know, you can feel like you can fight for it or not I guess Mm. depending on you know and then change it based on what other people say but also like knowing where you started and that like I don't know I mean I think just like confidence too uh has always been like hard for me so it's cool to you know come from a place where I feel informed so I can go out there and be like yeah you know I am bullshitting but it's also kind of informed bullshitting (laughs) right how long did Uh it take to build up the point where you felt confident um, I mean, it's still working, working on it. it. Yeah. yeah, it's a work in progress. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, it depends because I think like sometimes in certain environments, I'm like, oh, well, I could go to this like open mic even or just like a thing and feel like, yeah, you know, I got mm. this because like I've been at this for a while. I've seen this before. Um, but, you know, the first time I was working on a show as a writer's assistant, I was like, I mean, tell, I'll do whatever, you know, it's, yeah. you know, yeah. And of course, had like absolutely no confidence. And I think that was bad because then, you know, people are going to treat you differently because they're like, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, you know, I think I've gradually learned to be more assured. And then it pays off, too, because it's like I'm actually not going in there and being like not knowing what I'm doing, mm-hmm. you know, and I want to show that. So, yeah. I think <laughs> you have to always be uh-huh. I think pushing yourself uh, into places where you feel a little bit uncomfortable because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. otherwise you're not you're, you're you're just gonna stay in the same place oh yeah and yeah. you know even if you get to a place where you're like writing on shows all the time eventually that's gonna become feel right. like normal mm-hmm, and you're gonna mm-hmm. be confident going to every one and then you're like all right well what can I do now that's gonna push me outside of my comfort zone yeah so then I can learn more about myself or learn more about where I want to go and grow right with and this. like yeah and then like kind of surprise yourself with like oh yeah I guess I can do this that's crazy yeah mm-hmm. great let's uh wrap up with a couple quick questions Ooh, okay this is the weird segment I was telling you about oh now. yeah it's right, not, right it's not weird it's ah, just uh-huh. <laughs> it's just uh it's just a couple questions here that I ask every guest cool. um quick questions not necessarily quick answers but you know you can just answer however you want awesome uh, what book has had the biggest impact on your life? Ooh. 
Um, well, this is a recent one, and I read the. Uh, it's so I, it's a little embarrassing. I read the Defining Decade, which is that sort of it's sort of like a self help book essentially. Yeah, yeah. I'm on all like about self help books. Here we are. Um, about your twenties, and I think it was you know kind of talking about it was like a lot of case studies. This one was like a psychologist, psychiatrist, I can't remember, mm-hmm. um, and sort of, you know, people in their 20s and kind of just, I think the main takeaway for me was like, uh, you know, not putting too much pressure on yourself a little bit because everybody is in the same boat, um, feeling like, oh, what am I doing with my life or like, what's going on? Um, and so getting that reassurance from that was great. It also had good things like, you know, just get started. Even if you make the wrong choice, like you'll be, at least you'll know that was the wrong choice and that's further than... You would have if you never even got off mm-hmm. your butt, right? So I think you need that that kind of motivation, especially totally. at the beginning, but mm-hmm. even throughout. Because I, I remember when I first started freelancing, I just read so many books. I, like I would keep like kind of a spreadsheet of just all these books that I would read and just go from one to the next, just because I needed encouragement. I needed other people to tell me that it yeah. was possible. Um, but then you still need that. <laughs> like that doesn't go right. away. It's and it still helps, and totally, it helps to learn yeah. about new things. Uh huh. What one skill have you leveraged in a way that you think others haven't? Oh, dear. Um, <clears throat> it's like an interview question. Yeah, yeah. Where do you see yourself leveraging the skill years. within our company? Yeah, what's um, your weakest? Ooh, so I think, I think one strength, I do feel like I'm very aware of like situations that sounds so big but I think I was okay this is again back to my uh, nerdy student government days but I was like a crazy politician student you know where I was like who's gonna what votes do I need to get this position is so weird um it's like house but, of cards <laughs> yeah yeah I was like a little ooh, yeah um but <laughs> <laughs> are we allowed to like we can't make any house of card reference anymore because we of can Kevin Spacey. but we have to yeah we have to replace the word kevin spacey <laughs> with uh robin wright which is very great um what's robin wright oh, well she's the she's the wife right oh nice i almost the, made a louis ck reference uh-huh. back there before too <laughs> yeah, and now no, i brought it up anyway no, 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 but yeah it's, it's like we can't there's say a lot of words. yeah there's it's a lot of people words. i mean yeah it's funny i do a lot i do talk about them a lot sometimes in sets and it's like everybody's like uh-oh. everybody's butts especially around up. here yeah. yeah it's it's i mean you know not in a uh, yeah responsibly so but yeah, responsibly I closed think, butts yeah, <laughs> they should not be excited to hear these names sure. um but yeah yeah so yeah you know it's a little bit uh house of cardsy but the reason oh yeah but the reason being i think it, it always made me like very aware of like you know what the situation was how i should like present myself I guess a little bit and I I don't know maybe it's a little weird but I feel like if I'm in a job it's like I kind of am able to gauge the dynamic of like who's the person that you know uh who's having issues with who and like what what do I need to do to like appease the situation or you know do I need to and then I think also just like uh how people perceive me Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes I I no okay I should dress a little older because I think people think I'm like a little too young to be here or something like that so Hmm. kind of you know maybe it's all in my head but uh (laughs) no it's a Uh self-awareness isn't that so important it's like I feel like if you need if you want to grow and if you want to improve you Mm -hmm. need to be aware of how other people perceive you Mm -hmm. and then use it to your advantage and then you know because totally I feel like people are worried like they don't want to worry about branding or whatever like there's these kind of weird words that are right. associated I mean, with it yeah, especially online that branding it sounds like, icky e- but yeah, yeah but yeah. you're like all right well just how do you present yourself online is important right yeah and, yeah like your story mm, like things like yeah. that yeah i think it's important yeah. yeah uh let's see here a couple more questions what drives you why do you keep making stuff oh oh boy um probably just being able to, I think I like that adrenaline rush of like, oh, I think I got an idea. And like the possibilities are endless. And mm-hmm. um, also just liking that we get to do this in the first place. You know what I mean? Like I think I'm trying to stay awestruck and stay like, oh yeah, this is just so cool that like this can kind of maybe be my job. I mean, I'm, I've yet to fully get there, right? But I think that like, you know, thinking like, oh, this is kind of a weird path and I like being different and I like, you know, having sort of the possibility of like, this wasn't something that, you know, people could do 
a while back. I don't know. Yeah. I guess that it just feels like, oh, this seems like I've got really lucky. I'm at a good time right now. Um, and I have this opportunity to pursue this kind of weird thing that I kind of um, have made for myself in a way or like defined for myself. Um, and that gets me excited, I think, just like having the possibility of like, there's actually no set path and there's no um, ceiling. And then there's also no like uh, defined, like I can't see my life in the next month, which mm-hmm. is kind of terrifying. <clears throat> but I, you know, because it's kind of cool. It's like you get that call and be like, oh, I am working there now, you know. It's exciting. And I like that. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it kind of, because I've gotten used to it and I haven't totally fallen off a cliff yet. <laughs> I am very like... I am kind of terrified of the idea of only knowing what I'm going to do for an extended period of time, you know? And I think that's like kind of a freelancer mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that kind of drives me just sort of being like, ooh, what's going to happen tomorrow? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to take the highs with the lows. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. that's the only way that you can actually enjoy those those moments when things do work out. What one thing should people read, watch, or listen to before they go to bed tonight? Oh, Weird. Oh, okay. This is so weird because I feel like it's like me promoting a movie that I'm not even, I have nothing to do with. Mm-hmm. But I auditioned for this movie, which is why I watched it. And I'm always watching movies. I'm like, who got the part? And, yeah. then, and then I'm like, oh, they're much better than I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, God. People are talented. Um, yeah. No, but yeah. So I uh, so there's this movie called Brad's Status, which is like a Ben Stiller's, Ben Stiller is Brad. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the same writer and uh as a guy who wrote School of Rock. But um, it's basically like an interesting thing because I think I kind of have struggled a lot with comparing myself with other people and just like being like, oh, I'm not at that point, so maybe I'm a failure, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think this movie was exactly about that and like, you know, a little bit about social media, but he's like a middle-aged dad and he's taking his son to visit colleges and he's comparing himself with his college friends sort of because it's bringing back those memories of like, we were all at the same level here and then now like my friend has like a private jet or like my friend is, you know, this big Hollywood director or this and that and it shows his thoughts. So it's kind of, I think watching it as, uh, you know, an audience member was like, oh wow, this is crazy this person sounds crazy. And then it's like, oh, I'm being crazy by comparing myself. Yeah. yeah. And it helped remove myself from it. And I think it's really like relaxed uh, me a bit just for, you know, since I watched it. But, you know, I think it's yeah. just, it's a cool, fun thing to watch. It's also like funny and a good movie. But um, I think if people have an issue of like, you know, scrolling through Instagram and being like, man, I wish I could look like that or do this or whatever, like, that's definitely something I've struggled with um so I think that really embodied it well and then also made me see it from an outsider's perspective um better that's great Brad status yeah Brad status Amazon I guess it's yeah it's on Amazon Prime so it's like uh oh it's like yeah if you have Amazon Prime nice (laughs) yeah I don't want that Mm -hmm. uh all right last question how should people connect with you online Ooh, um, I guess, yeah, I mean, we talked about Twitter. I'm Everything's my name, so Sierra Cato, S-I-E-R-R-A-K-A-T-O-W. Um, yeah, same for Twitter, Instagram, and I guess uh, Google. Google. Just Google <laughs> you your name. Google my name? Google me, bitch. Google me, no. <laughs> Sweet. If you want to leave terrible comments, you know, I'm always <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. Only positive <laughs> Clearly, comments, I guys. take it with a grain of salt. So. Great. Thank you so much for yeah, doing the show. Thank you. Great. And that's the podcast for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you again for listening. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate your support. Um, going to send you off with a quote. I didn't, I didn't prepare a quote. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> God, you ever just start a sentence and like, you have no idea where you're going with it. And you're like, I hope this makes sense by the end. Uh, it's like, it's... <laughs> I would be the worst at improv. Um, So anyway, thank you for listening. Go to groundupshow.com for more stuff about the podcast, for other episodes and all that good stuff. Lots of videos. I've been making lots and lots of videos lately. So check those out. Appreciate your support. See you next week.